To access the embedded form editor, go to Forms. Make sure you're in the embedded forms area and click Create Embedded Form. Give your form a name. Click Save and Continue. Choose one of your groups for the form. I'll use my main list for this one. Click Save and Continue again. And let's go really quickly through the settings here and the design elements. This is the editor, this is the view, and these are the settings. So I'm going to leave the background as it is for now. The form, I'm going to have no image in the form area, but I'm going to change the background color to white. I'm going to save it. Of course, you can change the default view for this. Instead of the, the default, you can have horizontal, or you can have a card with a little image on it. This is pretty nice, but I'm going to go for default this time. I'm going to choose. Now the layout, I'm not going to change much here, but I don't like the border radius for this form, so I'm going to take it away. It makes the corners more squarish here. I'm going to click Save. And the heading, I want it to be centered. I want it to have a more classical look here. Maybe make it a little bigger and bolder. I'm going to save this. Now for the text, same thing. I'm going to change it to Times New Roman and just a little bigger. There we go. Click Save. And the input field, I'm going to take away the border again. So I'm actually not going to take away the border. I'm going to take away the radius here. There we go. So again, it's more squarish. Now the button is also a little rounded. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to change the font color to a lighter gray. There we go. Click Save. Now for the label, you're not going to be able to see that because we don't have the label on here. But let's just turn it to gray in case we're going to use that in the future. And also I'm going to change this to Times New Roman as well as the input field. I forgot to change that to Times New Roman too. There we go. And the call to action button, also Times New Roman. Also make it bold and make it a little bigger here. Take away the radius of the button. And I'm going to go for, for a different color here. I'm going to go for gray. I'm going to change the color of the font to darker. Let's go with black. And now, actually, let's do this. Let's go to the heading again. I'm going to change it to white. Let's make it totally a little classic look here. Make it white again. We can't see anything. Now I'm going to take the background color of the form, and instead of white, I'm going to switch it, switch it to black. There we go. And I want some borders. So let's go with some borders here. So it stands out a little. And there we go. So you can embed this onto your website, of course, right? In your sidebar, you can embed it into your article. But another cool thing is you can also use this as a like a mini landing page. And when you use it as a mini landing page, what you can do is have a nice background here. And let's do that right now. I'm going to go to background. I'm going to hit this color here. Now it's just gray. We can change it to uh, another color, purple if we like. <laughs> That's not good. So if we save that, we can, of course, change it back here. We can also go here in our history and undo that color there. There we go. So let's go to background again. This time, let's click image. And here we have all the images I have. Now, here we can upload a new image. We can also import it from a URL, from Google Drive, from Giphy, or Unsplashed. These are very beautiful free images you can use. And I want classic, so let's see what we got here. Here's a nice car. I'm going to import it here. There we go, and I'm going to select it. That's pretty nice, but it's kind of mushy. Let me let me darken the image a little. Again, background image. You can use this little edit button here. Now this is a third-party editor, so it takes a little time to edit. Let's do gray. Well, it's easy, it's fast to edit, but then if you want to save it, it takes a little time. Let's let's go down with the exposure to make it dark. So we make that form pop up, pop out a little more. Save. And now you have to wait a little for this image to have those edits applied. There we go. There, that looks pretty good. And now let's look at the success message here. 
thank you. We saw the history. We can have a little preview here. And of course, we also have settings. Let's go back to the subscribe form here. We have a privacy policy, a little thing we can set up here. Of course, we need to set the color. Here is a new element that pops out after we get that privacy policy. But just to make it faster, there we go. That's the privacy policy. I'm going to turn this back. I'm just going to change the color just for now, just so we're able to see the color of the the text that I'm be the, that I'm going to be adding. So let's make it a little lighter here. There we go. Instead of black, it doesn't look as good now, but just for the sake of showing you these features here. So we have that privacy policy. We also have a confirmation checkbox. If we needed a hidden segment field, if someone, if you need to add some kind of tag for some reason, like um, I don't know, someone subscribed, then you can the the this the custom field in your database will have that subscribe column, and then you can add, um, for example, yes or no, that will be added to your subscriber's data. Um, then we have the marketing permissions. If you're using one than more than one channel, if you're only using newsletters, you don't really need this. You don't even need a checkbox. You just need to clearly state what the people are getting when they're signing up. So sign up for news and special offers. And we suggest you use that privacy policy also that is here. You can edit it here and link it to your privacy policy by using this link here. Insert link, insert the link. I always like opening it in a new tab. And there we go. For now, I'm going to cancel it cancel and we have interest groups let me check these off so we we see those interest groups a little better there we go and what this basically does is you know we added uh, the the person is added automatically to the main list but when we add interest groups we can we can have more lists for example book club monthly newsletter right and the people before signing up they can actually choose where they want what they want to sign up to and when they unsubscribe they can also choose to do that then we have custom success page. So instead of having this success message over here, like you, you could have a separate page for your success message. For example, you, you can have a PDF file you promised someone, right? That is like linked to your Dropbox or your Drive, your Google Drive on your WordPress site, for example. So you can put in that URL of that site here. And then once someone signs up, they'll be sent there. And we have the recaptcha. If you're, if you're getting uh, too many spam signups for some reason, there's an attack or, or something like that, this will help you with that. People will need to first click this before they can hit the subscribe button. But let's, let's go back with this. Let's re redo some of the things here. There we go. There we go. Looks nice. And that's it. So I hope this was useful. You can see how easy it is to create these kind of forms. I'm not a designer, but I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please click subscribe, use the little bell icon. You can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, use the little subscribe link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.